Buzz and Mike, I want you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be president of the United States, but particularly because I have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. Uh, I could tell you about all the messages we've received in Washington. Over 100 foreign governments, emperors and presidents and prime ministers and kings have sent the most warm messages that we've ever received. They represent over 2 billion people on this earth, all of them who have had the opportunity through television to see what you have done. And then I also bring you messages from members of the cabinet and members of the Senate and members of the House and the Space Agency from the streets of San Francisco where people stopped me a few days ago and you all love that city, I know as I do. But most important, I had a telephone call yesterday. The tour wasn't incidentally as great as the one I made to you fellows on the moon. <laughs> I made that collect incidentally, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but I called uh, three of, in my view, three of the greatest ladies and most courageous ladies in the whole world today, your wives. And from Jan and Joan and Pat, I bring their love and their congratulations. We think it's just wonderful that they could have participated at least through television in this return. We're only sorry they couldn't be here. And also, I've got to let you in a little secret. I made a date with them. <laughs> uh, I invited them to dinner on, on the 13th of uh, August, right after you come out of quarantine. It will be a state dinner held in Los Angeles. The governors of all the 50 states will be there, the ambassadors, others from around the world and in America. And uh, they told me that you would come too. And all I want to know, will you come? We want to honor you then. <laughs> Well, do anything you say, Mr. President. <laughs> anytime. Uh, one question I think that uh, all of us would like to ask, uh, uh, as we saw you bouncing around in that the boat out there, I wonder if that wasn't the hardest part of the journey. Was that the only, did, did any of you get seasick? No, we didn't, and it, it was uh, one of the harder parts, but it was one of the most pleasant, we can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just know that, uh, uh, you can sense what we all sense when you get back now. Have right, you been able to follow some of the things that happened when you've gone? Did you know about the All-Star Game? Yes, yes, sir. The, uh, the Capitol Communicators have been giving us uh, they daily the news reports. Yeah. Were you American League or National League? I'm a National League man. National League. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's the politician in the group. Right. <laughs> but yeah, you missed that game. Yeah. Well, oh, you knew that too. You really heard. Uh, yeah, the rain. The rain. Right. Well, we haven't learned to control the weather yet, but that's something we can look forward to tomorrow's job. Right, right. Well, I could, I could summarize it because I don't want to hold you now. You have so much more to do. And Gee, you look great. You feel as good as oh, you feel. Oh, you feel great. You feel just perfect, Mr. Yeah. President. Yeah. Are you, I understand you're, Frank Borman says you're a little younger by reason of having going into space. Is that right? Do you feel that way, a little younger? We're a lot younger than Frank Borman. <laughs> 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 there he is over there. <laughs> Come on over, Frank, so they can see you. And you going to take that line down? Or they got... <laughs> it looks like he has aged in the last yeah. uh, couple of weeks. Come on, Frank. Mr. President, the one thing I wanted, you know, we have a, a poet in Mike Collins, and he really gave me a hard time for describing the words of fantastic and beautiful. And you were, I counted them. In three minutes up there, you used four fantastics and two beautiful. <laughs> well, just let me close off with this one thing. I, I was thinking, as, as, as you know, as you came down, and we knew it was a success, and it had only been eight days, just, just a week, a long week, that this is the greatest week in the history of the world since the creation. Because as a result of what happened in this week, the world is bigger, infinitely. And also, as I'm going to find on this trip around the world, and as Secretary Rogers will find that he covers the other countries in Asia, as a result of what you've done, the world's never been closer together before. And we just thank you for that. And I only hope that all of us in government, all of us in America, uh, 
that as a result of what you've done, we can do our job a little better. We can reach for the stars just as you have reached so far from the stars. We don't want to hold you any longer. Anybody have a, a last word? How about promotions? Do you think we could arrange something? <laughs> I'm uh, just pleased to be back and very honored that you uh, were so kind as to come out here and uh, welcome us back. Yeah. And uh, we look look forward to getting out of this quarantine and, and uh, right. talking without having glass right. between us. Right. And uh, incidentally, the, the speeches that you have to make at this dinner can be very short. And if you want to say fantastic or beautiful, that's all right with us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to think of new, any new adjectives. They've all been said. And now I think, incidentally, that... Uh, all of us uh, who, the millions that are seeing us on television now, seeing you, uh, would, would feel as I do that, in a sense, our prayers have been answered. And I think it would be very appropriate if Chaplain Pierto, the chaplain of this ship, were to offer a prayer of thanksgiving. And he would step up now. Chaplain, thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, our minds are staggered and our spirits exultant with the magnitude and precision of this entire Apollo 11 mission. We have spent the past week in communal anxiety and hope as our astronauts sped through the glories and dangers of the heavens. As we try to understand and analyze the scope of this achievement for human life, our reason is overwhelmed with abounding gratitude and joy, even as we realize the increasing challenges of the future. This magnificent event illustrates anew what man can accomplish when purpose is firm and intent corporate. A man on the moon was promised in this decade, and though some were unconvinced, the reality is with us this morning in the persons of astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. We applaud their splendid exploits and we pour out our thanksgiving for their safe return to us, to their families, to all mankind. From our inmost beings, we sing humble yet exuberant praise. May the great effort and commitment seen in this project, Apollo, inspire our lives to move similarly in other areas of need. May we, the people, by our enthusiasm and devotion and insight, move to new landings in brotherhood, human concern, and mutual respect. May our country, afire with inventive leadership and backed by a committed followership, blaze new trails into all areas of human care. See our enthusiasm and bless our joy with dedicated purpose toward the many needs at hand. Link us in friendship with people throughout the world as we strive together to better the human condition. Grant us peace beginning in our own hearts and a mind attuned with goodwill towards our neighbor. All this we pray as our thanksgiving rings out to thee in the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. trip around the world. The Hornet is sailing to Honolulu. It arrives there tomorrow. 
And from there, the astronauts in their sealed container will be flown to Houston, where a somewhat roomier quarantine building awaits them. So far, there is no evidence whatever of any infection or of any unwholesome effects from the moon. If it turns out, as everyone expects, that there won't be any, then Apollo 11 will have been a rarity in human affairs, a total success, and a credit to the American people and to the human race. I want you to know that I think I...